Welcome to Get Offset. My name is Emily. And have I ever told you that you light up a room whenever you enter it? <laughs> well, I'm here courtesy of Sweetwater and Pre Sonus to show you around the uh, Fader Port 8. This is a tactile controller that works with a lot of digital audio workstations, aka DAWs. Uh, but it, out of the box, it works perfectly with PreSonus Studio One. I've been using PreSonus Studio One for years. I pay for the Sphere subscription. Um, Sweetwater did send me this to demo. And another, pro another product I'll be talking about uh, today is Easy Drummer 3. You can find a video I did on Easy Drummer 3 on the channel. It's pretty popular. It's called uh, Three Ways to Build, something like, it's called something like Three Ways to Build uh, Drum Parts with Easy Drummer 3. And um, you can get all of those things via the affiliate link in the video description from Sweetwater. It makes a huge difference to the channel and doesn't cost you anything extra. But if you're like me, you, got, you kind of get tired of like using a mouse or even worse, like a laptop trackpad and mixing and recording things. It's not very natural. It's doable. I've done it. I've obviously done it for a while before I got the fader port. Uh, eight and probably early 2022. Um, but it just has made a huge difference in my workflow. I like tactile things. And if you don't know, tactile, it, it's, it's the opposite of tactile is just like clicking and pointing on a screen, which is fine. That's a great way to work. A lot of people like it. I prefer more physical things, especially if you grew up or were trained on a physical console. Um, you might prefer something tactile. It means you can move it and touch buttons with your fingers. I have a little tactile controller that I use for video editing and uh, I've basically assigned different functions. So like a space, uh, control S, arrow functions, two different controls on this and it makes my video editing a lot faster, more pleasant, especially right now when frankly it kind of hurts to use a mouse. Uh, that's my bad. <laughs> but um, let's talk a little bit about the Fader Port 8 controls. Um, I can just talk them at you. I think it's going to be a lot easier to see it with an actual track in Studio One. So I'm going to pull open Studio One and I'll stay in the corner. <laughs> this is an actual... Um, song that I was working on with my friend Michelle from Michelle Sullivan and the All Night Boys. Uh, it's a cover of a Polaris song called Summer Baby. And if you listened or watched The Adventures of Pete and Pete, you've heard that song probably. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. But right from the get go, you see these faders and they're actually flying faders. So if I go over on the screen, and drop that down all the way, it, it, this drops down all the way. I don't know how to describe that. You push it up, but look on the screen, it goes up. And just to show how, how it fades, um, let's start with this section right here. So in this section, you can select all the tracks that fit audio. So I recorded audio, guitar and bass, and then I used uh, a virtual instrument to create the drum. So if I click audio here, all that remains is the drum and bass. It's a great way to clean thing, clean up your workstation if you have a lot of different things going on. We also have virtual instruments. That is the, the drum. So if I just want to work on the drums, I can do that here. We also have buses, VCAs, and we can go back to all. So you can see uh, how everything is flying and fading. And obviously, I didn't really mix this. I sent the separate tracks to a friend, uh, the person who was doing the, uh, the, the rest of the mixing and recording with Michelle because Michelle was going to record vocals. So I just kind of left everything in the middle, but if I actually wanted to make some adjustments, I can. And y you might be looking at this and realizing, let's go back to virtual instruments. I have more virtual instruments than I do uh, oh, down here than I do up here. 
And that's because uh, this is essentially the bus that you see right there. So there's a main drum and I ported out the different parts. So let's uh, look at something else. We have this section over here and this is like, let, let's start with the basic stuff. So channel, there's a selected channel you, <laughs> and you can go between different channels. So obviously if I select all, I can go between every single thing and uh, just visually. I can also zoom if I click on zoom, very, very big zoom there. And uh, I can scroll as well. And you can see the line moving on the screen as I scroll. And if we go to zoom, we can see exactly where that's scrolling. So it's scrolling bar by bar. I don't have banks set up, but this will go between banks of 16 if you have a lot of things going on. Um, you can turn the click track on and off and you can see that down here in the corner. So if I hit play, yeah, um, that's a pretty good place to get into the next thing that I want to look at. Um, there are other buttons, I'll get to them in a second, but uh, there are F1 functions in Studio One, F1, F2, F3, F4, so F functions, function keys, that's why they're, they have the letter F there. If I hit shift, I can get to these alternate functions of any of these, and in this section, that alternate function are the function keys. So F1 opens the inspector over here, and if I go to different channels, what is happening in the inspector changes. So there we go. Next is F2. That's the editor. And you can, I'm going between channels here as well. I can scroll, get to different parts of the editor. So that's just different bars of this drum part. That makes it kind of easy. To, to go between things. I'm going to close that. I'm going to close the editor and now I'm going to open the mixer and the mixer is where you can see those different drum parts. So if I go back here to virtual instruments, you can see things going up and down at the same time. You, so you're going to see some panning on here, but you're not going to hear it. Um, because there are a lot of restrictions when taking audio from your computer and putting them into a video the way that I'm doing it. Uh, it's just a little bit hard to make it stereo. So I'm just not. So I'm going back to the beginning. I have my virtual instruments open and I'm going to figure out what the different drum parts are in this bus. And I'm going to do a little bit of panning and to pan you select. There are actually two ways to do pan. The easiest way to do pan is to select and then make adjustments here. So if you're looking down here, you can see that moving. You may also be able to see it on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and center that. The other way to do panning is to go over here and hit pan. And there's center, and then you can move it around. So I'm going to do this, do it this way because I wanna do panning on a few things at once. So, um, Let's hit play and let's make this uh, first virtual instrument soloed. The kick I like being in the middle, so. The snare I like being a little bit on my right side, so I'm gonna pull that down, no, pull it, push that up, I mean. Just a little bit. Yeah. Hat, I also kind of like being over there because it's close to the drum, this, uh, the snare, a little bit farther, so. This you don't hear yet, but let's fast forward. That's the tom. So let's pull that over to the left. I'm doing audience perspective on this, or left-handed drummer perhaps. And let's center this. All right, then I can clear solos, do all my tracks. 
Now I'm still in panning mode. So if I were to adjust these, I wouldn't be adjusting the volume on any of these. So I'm going to go back to track mode so we can see our tracks. You can also edit plugins up here. I don't have a lot of plugins on, uh, so I'm just going to go back to track. You can also do sends. I don't really have anything going on there. Back to track. You can also arm the different channels. So I'm going to go over here, going to select the guitar and oh, it still has that selected. Arm the guitar. So easy enough, disarm. And if you did shift, you would arm everything that can be armed. Going back and going to unarm those. Beep. Fantastic. Going back over to this section. I didn't go into all of the F functions um, that will, I don't know why I keep calling them F functions, alternative functions, those F keys. There are other things that you can do. Obviously there are other functions. Um, in Studio One, we can open our browser with F4 and then we can type in, say we want the Benson Chimera plugin from Mixwave, link in video description. And you can add things, plugins, instruments, that way. I'm going to close that because you can open and close multiple things at once. F5 is the scratch pad. That's professional only. I don't use that. F6 is the tempo track. I accidentally hit click. Obviously, I'm not using that. But the last two I do use and did use for this song. F7 is the arranger view. And uh, if you also select section, you can bounce between the different sections in the song. And this is professional only just by hitting these arrow keys. That's really, really convenient. It's a great reason to use arranger is to keep everything organized. F8. It's markers. I have a couple markers in the song. I don't really remember why, but you can also go, uh, oh, if you click on marker, you can also go between them. And uh, let's talk about some of the more obvious things. Hitting record will start recording. We have stop, we have pause and play. Um, <laughs> it's gonna sound dumb, but I think the record button here is the most used thing on this because I use it a lot. I use that, I use these two, I use stop. You can turn loops on and off. <laughs> Those are just like, there is so much to get into on this that it, it can feel a little bit overwhelming, but once you tr like intentionally work it in to your workflow, the rewards are enormous. If you use automation, there's stuff up here. There's also alt functions for save, redo, and undo, and then uh, some user defined functions it looks like. The last thing I want to mention on Fader Port 8 is the ability to edit plugins. So let's take a look at that. I've got and go from track to edit plugins. Um, that's where you select a plugin. Let's select that delay. That pops up. So this is bypass, but I wanted to be able to show it to you. This has a lot of stuff going on. You can see up here what each channel is supposed to control. But if you don't know, you can kind of, you can move them around. So time, I see time moving, uh, it's synced, but you can just kind of adjust them and get a feel for what's changing what. So uh, this channel is changing the feedback. Speed doesn't seem to be controlled. Let's turn off the sync and see if that changes. No. Amount. You can see that change there. Low cut's not up there. Drive's not up there. High cut. Factor, right there. Inertia, right there. And drive versus what? Here's the compressor. I can click there and set it to control with Studio 8. So it looks like I have threshold right here, and you can see that moving. Ratio right there. We can really, really crank that ratio. <laughs> so the cluster flux I was using on guitar. And if we click over here, 
Vader port eight, everything goes back to the bottom. So I clicked on Vader port eight over here. I go to auto fill. So I can control the drive output next delay time feedback and more on that page. And then I can do some other things on this page. That's really, really cool to be able to control those plugins first. Like this is made to look like a guitar pedal, but doesn't really feel like using one. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a bummer, but I can go over here and adjust the controls like a physical object. It makes it feel less like a plugin and a little bit more like a pedal because with pedals, you're used to using them uh, in a tactile way. So that is a lot, um, probably not as much as some videos. You could teach a course on this, probably a multi-week course on getting everything out of the fader port eight. But if you're looking for something that enables you to use your hands, your fingers versus pointing and clicking, whether you just don't enjoy pointing or clicking or whether it's like physically hard for you, um, I really recommend the fader port series. There's a fader port one. That's just a one channel. That's going to be enough for a lot of people, especially if you just want to use it to like push these buttons and to scroll around and you can, you can change pages on, on this. So you can use this with songs that have more than eight tracks. So you can use a fader port one on songs that have more than one track, six, the fader port 16, which is a, would take up a lot of space on a desk. Um, you can use that with obviously more than 16 tracks. You can go over pages. So this plugin is a great example because there are more than eight elements, but I can just go between those with the push of a button. Um, it's helpful to have that up on the screen as well. But again, if you're like me and you don't like living on a computer and you want to feel and do things with your hands, I can't recommend the fader port eight enough. Um, start with the fader port one, perhaps if you're not sure, but I'm really glad that I got the eight. It feels like that sweet spot for me and I have enough desk space. Uh, the fader port one seems to be something you can move and transport, uh, which I, I think if you're on the move a lot, that's going to be really, really handy. I mean, I travel with my tactile hand controller for video editing if I need to uh, edit on the fly because otherwise I would probably be using a computer trackpad, like a laptop trackpad, which isn't conducive for me at all. But uh, this has changed my workflow a lot. It makes editing and recording a lot faster, uh, especially once you get the hang of using it. Don't expect it to be faster immediately, but the more you use it, the more you learn, uh, the more you kind of spend time with the manual, it's really going to pay off in spades for most people is um, what I believe to be true. But to everybody out there, you know, do what's best for you, obviously. Uh, this is just my recommendation. This is just how I, I just wanted to show it off, give you an idea of what it's like. Um, thank you again to Sweetwater for facilitating this demo. Um, thank you to you for watching. Thanks for understanding. Please like, comment, subscribe. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash get offset. That gives you access to our exclusive Discord server, merch, other kinds of things. Uh, if you were in there, you would see the video of me falling, steps out of my front door. Rain cams are fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so everybody out there, thanks for watching again. Thanks for understanding. Um, super chats are appreciated. Giving thanks underneath the video is appreciated. But to everybody out there, uh, I'll see you next time. My name is Emily. Uh, keep on radiating whatever you're radiating whenever you walk into a room. It just keeps me going. <laughs> well, uh, yep. Yeah. Goodbye.